Welcome to Short Scale Modeling for my next build. I'm building this Airfix English Electric Lighting F2A Scale 172. Um, the small kit and just got a couple of these uh, smaller ones to do before I go on to my next main project. So I thought I'd do a little video of it. The instructions are your normal fare. Um, if you've not already done this kit, it's quite an old kit now. There we go. The two options at the back. So you have the Germany option, and what did we have here? Oh, Germany as well. So obviously that's where they will be. So you've got the, the blue and the silver, and the green and the silver. I'm going to be doing it in this one because every time I do a lightning, I've always done it silver. So I'm going to be doing it um, in the green camel. So oh, that's that. I've got a bit of cold so I'm a bit, so I do apologize. Uh, stencil sheet, here, self-explanatory, have you built these before? Decal sheet, some nice looking decals on here. And the sprues, I've already primed sprues, there's four of them in total. So A, A through to D, so the wings, fuselage, the other half of the fuselage and engines there to intake and the other part of the wings and landing gear and of course the um, canopy. So as I said I've already primed them so I'm going to get on with the build. So I'm starting off the cockpit and the seats and I'm painting it in Mr Hobby 457 F Brown and that's uh, for the cushion in the seat. I'm using Mr. Hobby 422 semi gloss light green, and this is for the, the back of the seat and um, just up to the headrest, I believe it was. H12 matte black. Um, th this is for the joysticks and the other tiny little parts. For the nose cone, I'm using 464 chrome green. Now, you've Eagle Eye among you may have noticed I'm using different paints here. Um, I, I've just purchased a, a set of the Mr. Hobby paints, so this is the first time I'm using them. So I'm just trying them all out. There's three uh, sets of decals that go into the cockpit. Two on the armrest and one for the actual um, display panel. The assembly of the cockpit is uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, there are two sides to the seat that go onto the main unit before fit, uh, fitting into its cradle. Um, same with the joystick in the instrument panel. For the framework of the chair, I'm using H306 grey um, for the uh, main contrast colours. Just bear in mind, when you are building this uh, cockpit, the, the parts are small, but they're, they're also um, e easy to fit in uh, as well. So you shouldn't have any problems, depending on whether, uh, how experienced you are, but I feel even beginners would find this uh, relatively easy to put together and of course it doesn't take long to actually build the cockpit as well as uh, because it's a uh, simple in design but it does look nice once it's made up. I'm having the landing gear down so I'm using Rebel Aquacolor 90 Silver. Now this silver is still the best I think that um, it is on the market for the silver colour. I've tried many different uh, brands uh, for the silver colour and I just love the, the Rebel one so that's why I'm going back to that one. What needs to be built is the engines and air intakes. These are uh, again a simple process of just marring up the two halves together. Now I'm using a little bit of super glue here um, inside the cone. This is uh, to apply weight. So once the uh, glue is in I'm using a little bit of liquid gravity to fill up the, the cone and that just pours inside the cone and then I'll seal that off with a little bit more super glue. So it doesn't come out, and then it's a uh, time to uh, attach the the other half of the air intake and nose cone together. Now I've attached the nose cone uh, first before putting the main unit together. It, it's just easier to add for strength because I have put weight in it, so you you want to make sure it's completely stable. Um, so it's easier to do it that way than trying to marry it up. Um, as a joining unit and having to hold it and put pressure on it. 
thoughts was made up. I did have to use a couple of little clamps. Um, it didn't quite meet um, in the middle at, at certain points, so I, I did have to put a bit of pressure on to close them up. When it was time to put on the rotating fans, uh, there is two of them uh, to put on, one for this unit, one for another one. It is easy to get them mixed up, but if you look at the part, uh, there is a different shape to the mould. Uh, but I'll tell you which one to put on if you've cut, already cut them off the sprue. Then the cockpit just sits on top of the engine. There's a couple of little location points for it to fit in its proper location. Next to the exhaust ports uh, to make up. Now I uh, painted the rim with these in Rebel Apricola 99 Aluminium and like the silver it is a really nice uh, aluminium colour. The sidewall of the cockpit is uh, Mr Hobby 306 grey. The next step is uh, scribing the panel lines. Now on this kit you don't really have to do it um, but I, I just do it as a matter of course. Making up uh, the engine exhaust ports here, they are uh, two uh, units that go into uh, the main housing. Make sure you get them the right way around, well they can only go in one way anyway. And once they're on the housing it's just a simple case of marrying up to the main unit at the back. The last to go on this process is the uh, rear rotating fans. It's time to put it together. So first of all the cockpit. Now the location points in these are extremely well marked out and um, it fitted in perfectly. There was no need to jiggle it about trying to get into position. It, it just dropped in fantastically. And then of course the rear uh, exhaust and engines. Same again. Uh, it just fitted in nicely. Although I did find that I had to push down on the engines a little bit to get them to go hard against the edge. Bonding the fuselage, uh, fairly straightforward. Um, I did have to put on the sun clamps um, because um, the fit is, is really quite tight but you, you have to put a bit of pressure on it for to marry up on the on the seams. Um, so I would recommend just putting a couple of old uh, placement clips on first of all to hold it then see where it's not going to marry up and then put it under uh, a heavier clamp. You have to be aware though because it can pinch up the plastic so although you want it to um, weld together you don't want it to uh, weld it together out of shape so that's something you're going to have to uh, contend with. The way I did it was I, I um, just done a little bit of time to make sure that each uh, part was welded. I'm using Rebel Aquacolor 90 Silver for the underbelly of the uh, craft as well as the um, uh, wing, so the underside of the wings. And this is applied with using a flat brush and using straight um, continuous strokes to get a, a level even look to the finish. For the edge of the wings it's um, Mr Hobby 405 Flat Olive Green and that's just getting run around the edges of the uh, the wing here. Now the fuselage drives, time to put in the underbelly parts. Now these um, I again fitted rather well. The, on my kit there was no need to trim them to fit or sand them down. Uh, they just placed them rather, rather easily. And once everything was dry I just uh, took the opportunity to uh, file down any uh, seam lines. So going from coarse to medium to fine to extra fine great sandpaper. So it's Rebel Aquacolor 90 Silver again for the uh, underside of the aircraft like the wings and uh, I'm painting this uh, part first because it's the lighter colour and that way it's easier to cover up with the darker colour if need be. And for the main body I'm painting it with Mr Hobby 405 flat olive green now I'm not using any masking tape to paint the um, hard edge line from the green to the silver because the panel line um, acts as a guide and it depends on how good you are at freehand painting as whether you should do this or not. It helps if you've got a good brush to do it. Um, again I'm using a flat brush. Um, if you are hand painting try and have various sizes of flat brushes in your toolkit. That way um, you it does uh, reduce the amount of masking needed through the course of the build. There's a few location points around the wings for you to bond them together. Um, 
one of them uh, the pins were slightly higher than needed to be so I had to cut them off uh, so a, a dry fitting is essential uh, before you do this and you will need a couple of clamps as well uh, on the edges uh, for them to bond together the flaps are a nice tight fit they just push into position and then you can have them at any angle that you wish and now that the wings are made up it's time to uh, put them in now the um, they, they fitted really nice and simply they they went into the recess without any fuss you do have to hold them a bit obviously for them to bond uh, but apart from that it it was okay the rear bins were slightly more trickier um, the, the the location point is at an angle so um, just be aware of that before you put them in it may look slightly confusing and um, look look at the instructions as well to see what angle you want the wings at the machine gun ports were next to go in and they, they, they needed a little bit of trimming just to make them fit into the recess remember they are a small part as well so uh, just be careful then I went on to uh, fitting the the rear stabilizers and um, they, they, they fitted um, all, all right as well um, they are on an angle um, as you expect with the stabilizers so just make sure you, you get the right one for the right side and the proper angle it can be a little bit tricky I should have pointed out as well on the um, machine gun covers and ports there is a option for varying A and B that you you may want to look at before you fit them then it was on to fitting the um, catapult catcher which was painted in Tamiya's XF56 metallic grey just like the rebel cause this Tamiya colour for the metallic grey I found the best on the market that, that's one of my uh, go to colours for this sort of thing so next is back to the cockpit and uh, putting in the top covers they, they just uh, fit in quite easily the um, it just lives on top of the instrument panel now I'm going on to the wheels and for the outer wheel I'm using life color UA733 black and rubber shears tire black and the inner part of the wheel is Mr Hobby 464 chrome green next to go in is the air brake covers they can be left over if you wish they have a little piston for you to do so but I didn't have them ones closed onto the canopy and it's Mr Hobby 405 flat olive green um, um, for you for all those who have watched my videos before you'll know that I prefer to freehand paint my canopies um, it doesn't really matter if they're small or large sometimes they will mask but uh, the key is look at the the edges where you're painting to see whether they're defined if they're nicely defined then I'll hand paint them I'm using Mr Hobby H12 matte black to paint the black flash that runs down from the canopy to the nose cone and back to the machine gun pots and I'm painting them Revo Aquacolor 99 aluminium and that's the same as for the ring uh, around the, the nose as well so you want those two colours to, to match and now it's time to make up the um, landing gear assembly for the uh, front wheel the um, landing cover um, port goes actually onto the actual wheel uh, first of all before placing it in inside the actual fuselage this helps stabilizing it when you put it in the recess point is nice and tight though so you don't have to worry so much about movement and waiting for it to set too much next to go in bar the um, the covers this for the sides um, the, there's a couple of little um, hinges here for them so it's uh, quite easy to to locate them in, inside the um, cavity to put them on and then it's on to the, the main wheels um, I decided to um, make these all up before putting them onto the aircraft there, there's a couple of ways you can do it you can build it um, as you're joining it to the aircraft or you can uh, build them as a complete unit then put them in um, depending how you feel I, I decided to build the entire unit because there's enough room inside the cavity of the landing gear bay for you to manoeuvre the wheel into position so while I'm waiting for the landing gear uh, wheels to bond um, I'm just making up the two little uh, missiles that come with it so the kit comes with two fire strike missiles which are um, 
fairly simple to um, assemble. There's just a, a couple of fins that you have to put on before mounting it onto the housing. Now the lung is ready to go in and um, there's two um, location for points for them to to hold the, the position in and they, they just pop in really. It's uh, nice and simple this one. As with the front landing gear covers, these are uh, real ones um, fitted in uh, using the little brackets on on the actual covers. They just um, hook on the inside of, of the cavity bay. Fire Street missiles getting painted in Mr. Hobby H1 white gloss and um, it, I found it easier to build all the house and that around it first before painting uh, these. I was considering painting them on the sprue but um, it was too tight so I decided to partially build them and do it this way. Next to go on is the canopy. I've already placed on the back part of the canopy so I'm just uh, putting on the, the front uh, part now. The um, canopy fits in really nicely, there's not any major issues, you don't have to worry about any gap issues on this. And then it's time for the rear wheels to go on. Um, they can only go on a certain way, the uh, recess is um, uh, shaped in such a way that you, they can only go on one way, so just pay attention to that when you're putting them on. Now it's time to put on a, a varnish, so I'm putting on clear varnish here. So this is Pledge Clear Polish and um, I'm just putting a light coat around the entire model. But now it's time for the decals, as you can see I've far forward this part. I am placing the decals on the normal way, softening them in some warm water and then applying uh, a decal solution which is Umbral Decal Fix before placing the, the decal on. I was surprised how many decals there was actually to put onto this kit um, when you get into it. In fact, the decaling of this model took an entire day to do. Also, it depends on what variant you're doing is what decals you put on, but there's not that much difference apart from the main decals. But that's them all on now anyway. Time to complete the assembly of the missiles. Now the tips are painted in H12 matte black from Mr. Hobby. And this is actually a clear part as, as well. So um, you may be looking for it on your sprue, but it's on the clear part of the sprue. And they just uh, fit into the tape. I'm fitting these now instead of before the decals because it's just easier to put the decals on first before um, you, you, you fit them. That way they're just not getting in the way you're trying to put on all the tiny little decals. Next is uh, the front probe. It just fits in the um, uh, tape here. Now that was painted in Rebel Aquacolor 90 silver. Now I, I actually put this tip on too early. I ended up breaking it off. So I had to re I snapped it in half when I handled it. So I had to reattach it. Um, I generally put this in the last thing before I finished the model. But um, I, I just wasn't thinking I, I placed on. I, I think the reason was I, I thought I was finished, but I wasn't. I still had a little bit of weathering to do. But before I got into the weathering, it was time to put on another coat of pledge player. And that, this is uh, to seal in all the decals and, and things like that once they're all dry. Now, it does take a couple of hours for the decals to dry, so just be aware of that. But to start the weathering, it's Tamiya's Weather Mass and D, and I'm using the burnt blue and burnt red um, components here. So I'm using a brush sharpener and putting on the burnt blue first, then going on to the burnt red and just blending in those two colours. I'm then going on to a weathering mask of B and using the soot um, component here to um, streak um, weather marks uh, along the wings. So this brings the build to an end. I would recommend this kit to anyone, beginners and experienced build builders alike. For the beginner builder, um, the kit goes together really well and you'll learn some um, great techniques along the way on this kit that you'll take through to the rest of uh, your future builds. So it's a really good uh, starting kit for anyone. If you haven't done so already, why don't you check out my other builds on the channel. Um, subscribe to the channel as well for um, any upcoming updates and um, videos. If you liked what you saw here, uh, why don't you throw me a like as well and indeed leave a comment. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.